Welcome to today's 3D print. This is an ANET E10 alert. You must pay attention to this video if you have this printer. It's very important. Um, one of the primary modifications you need to make to this printer is to rotate your Z-stepper motors. The problem you're going to run into is that the um, leveling knob will crash into the Molex connector on the Z-stepper. Now the reason this crash occurs is not because of a design flaw. It actually clears it. Mine did not hit it once I corrected the quality control flaw. But the tolerances are so close that one of the quality control flaws causes the crash problem. On almost every printer, at least that I've seen on video, the H brace is bent. This, these back arms are actually bent down a little bit. You can actually visibly see the bend, which brings the control leveling knob down which allows it to crash into the Molex connector because they are so close together. I'm guessing somewhere in the factory weight gets pressed on top of this which bends that which would do exactly that. If I push down on here hard enough it's going to bend this plate because it's not a one piece solid plate it's a strip of metal. It's an H brace, a three piece H brace. So even though it's very thick metal it's a thin strip of it so it's prone to being bent if you were to push down this. So do not put pressure on your bed because you stand the chance of bending your H brace. Now, what I did is I simply undid these two screws and then I just physically grabbed the motor and turned it. That proved to be a very bad idea because now I have a pretty pronounced Z wobble on my prints. It's pretty hard to see on camera because it, it, it's minor but it's very visible in person. There it is, you can see it there. Okay, I have since partially corrected it. I'll explain how I did that, but I have to order new parts. Um, I think my mistake was I this was down here, so the bend force was a lot. I suspect that I could have gotten away with doing it that way had I raised this gantry all the way to the top, which would give me a lot of pivot room, which would have allowed this to bend without tweaking anything. But don't try it that way, just do it the right way. It only adds about five minutes to the process. So here's the process. Take these two bolts out, okay? Using the same Allen key, undo these two grub screws, okay? Now your stepper is loose and your coupler is loose from your Z-Rod. Then come up here with your Phillips screwdriver. All these tools are included with the kit. Undo these two screws all the way so they come out. Actually physically remove them. Then this will slide off the top. You'll have to wiggle it a little bit. Just give it a little jiggle, wiggle it off. It'll come off. It just sits there in the bearing. It's not actually bolted in place. Um, the reason you take the screws out all the way is because, again, you do not want to have to pull this out this way, which will, again, add torque force to this rod, which you do not want. Um, once you get this off, you'll be able to put your screwdriver into the T-slot and pop out your little T-nuts that are in there, um, the self-tightening turn T-nuts, and then just twist them back onto the screws that you put back into place. Okay? Now... Um, the next thing to do is now that you have that undone, you'll be able to jiggle and turn and rotate because you have to rotate. You can't just lift because it's going through this threaded brass coupler here. Okay, so you have to lift and rotate to get the, not, the rod to come out of the coupler. Once it comes out of the coupler, you've already loosened these and these, turn it 90 degrees. Allow it to rotate back into place into the coupler. Make sure it goes all the way in. Retighten the two grub screws. Put these two screws back in to reinstall this. Um, loosely put the T-nuts back onto the end of the screws already in this. Um, push them against the body of the, um, the printed um, shaft holder so that it will minimize. You only have to bend this two or three millimeters. Lower this all the way to the bottom, okay? And then just push out slightly, slide it into place, jiggle it until the two T-nuts go inside. Then when you push on the screws to push them in all the way, the T-nuts will insert themselves into the slot. Then you tighten them and they self-tighten and grab the way they're supposed to. That's it. You're done. Rinse and repeat for the other side. So to go over the process again, take these two screws out. Loosen these two grub screws. Take these two screws out completely. Remove the cap and bearing holding the rod in place. Okay. Turn and lift the rod to remove it from the coupler. Turn the stepper 90 degrees. Bolt it back in place. Rod back in place. Grub screws tightened up again. T-nuts threaded barely onto the screws, inserted into the plastic, lower the gantry all the way, um, push out just slightly the two millimeters you need, slide these back into place and into the slots, push the screws in to insert the T-nuts into the T-rail, tighten. That's it. You're done. Um, I would also suggest 
tweaking your Y carriage stepper motor. Um, this one's very easy. Just take out the four screws, turn the motor 90 degrees so that the plug comes out to the left on this side. This way, if you do this to work on your printer, you're not pushing your Molex connector into your print your your table. Um, it protects that Molex connector. This should be done from the factory. Hopefully, they'll see my update video and add these corrections to QC at the factory because it's very easy. All they have to do is simply change the way they assemble it. I mean, technically, there's nothing wrong with the way they did it, but their quality control created a problem where this got bent, which caused the crash. All right, so to avoid that, what I did, bending it, the way I got around my problem temporarily is I put the, I straightened out the rod as best I could manually, and then I took the bent stepper and put it over there. I swapped the steppers. Um, this way, I have a little bit of wobble in that one and a little bit of wobble in this one, and the two together result in overall less wobble. You can see this is before I made the correction, and this is after I made the correction. This is not a flaw in the printer. The printer was making absolutely flawless, and I do mean flawless prints. Even the zipper is barely visible. I can feel it right there. There it is. You can barely see the zipper. The prints are absolutely flawless. This error was 100% my fault. I manhandled the stepper and just, ah, and just turned it, and that was a bad idea. I should not have done that. <laughs> so when you get your A9 E10, be sure to make that correction.